One of the other great things about conference is that it provides us with a chance to hear from some of the visionaries about their response to some of the key issues of our time. And our first keynote is from Lem Sisse, award-winning poet, playwright and author, who's also associate artist at London South Bank Centre. Born here in the Northwest, Lem Sisse is now Vice Chancellor of the University of Manchester. Please give Lem a very warm welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's a real thank you. It's such an honour to be here. Um, uh, this is my home, Manchester, it's where I'm from, and um, I'm, I'm not Vice Chancellor uh, of the University of Manchester, um, I'm, I'm Chancellor. Uh, I tried to get that job, but they wouldn't let me... Uh, do I've, by the way, I've got a voice in my head, it's going, you crap, get off. <laughs> I've got another one, it's going, no, you're doing all right, carry on. <laughs> I've got one in the middle, it's saying, you two, separate now. <laughs> I've got one behind that, and it's saying, shall we form a choir? I've got one behind that and it's saying, to do that, we'll need a worker to administrate the process. <laughs> I've got one behind that, it's saying, right, lads and women, let's split up into small groups. Uh, we'll need a constitution subcommittee, we'll need a, a funding group, and we'll also need an another group to decide why we're there in the first place. <laughs> I, I've got one behind them and it's saying, right, what we, what we definitely need is uh, to send out evaluation forms into the community <laughs> to decide whether getting a worker is relevant to this particular situation or not. I've got one behind that saying, I'll do the questions because we're going to rig the questions because the people on the funding committee said that the people who were going to give the funding were not actually going to give it for a choir master in, in the community, for something else, so they'll change their core purpose just so they can get that funding. So they send out the evaluation forms, rig the questions, so the evaluation com forms come back. The questions, I've got the answers that the funders will Need. We'll do a few workshops, don't worry, they'll be happy. We'll, we'll, so, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get, so we get that, and then somebody says, Stop, stop, everybody, stop, stop. We need capital funding for a building <laughs> to house the worker who'll administrate the process. So, anyway, what we'll do is, right, we'll, we'll, we'll apply for the capital funding and we'll get the building. We'll get, we've got the building, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the building. We'll call it the choir master for the community, bringing people together, diverse, ethnic, and urban will be in there. <laughs> so, what we'll do is, we've got the building. We've got the building. We need to get a worker now. We need to set up an equal opportunities panel to interview the worker, even though we all know who should get the job. So anyway, we'll set up an equal opportunities panel full of workers that we don't like, full of people that we don't know, full of the funders that we want to get from, so we like them for now. So we'll, we'll set up the, the, the thing, they'll, 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 they'll interview, they'll do the interviews, we'll get the one that we think we should get. We'll do the interviews and it turns out uh, we've got a worker, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a worker, we've got a building, we've got the evaluation forms back, we are relevant. Because, not because the community said it, but because the funder gave us the money. <laughs> so we got the worker, but unfortunately, after a couple of months, it turns out the worker's a wanker. <laughs> so, 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 you know, so sorry for the swearing there, but so what we'll have to do, <laughs> what we'll have to do, we'll have to set up another group in another building, get some more funding to get the worker, to administrate the process of the quiet, to, to, to answer the question as to whether it was relevant in the first place or not. <laughs> <Wait. Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody who's if somebody started to clap, they went, Oh, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> I, was, I was meaning to begin with a poem, and my poem is called... Uh, the fact is, the point about that is, is that the service was never actually given. The building was bought, the, the worker was got, the funding was okayed, the people who ended up working in that situation, suddenly because they were working for what they called now the community, which used to be called their friends, the, the people who work there don't feel like they're part of the community anymore. They're servicing the community. They suddenly sort of separated themselves from it. It's quite incredible that money can do that. That money it kind of uh, becomes the, um, the, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing. <laughs> you can tell I'm very scripted. Is, it, is somebody actually trying to copy this? 
Is somebody actually trying to write what I'm saying up there? My word, that's incredible. I said... <laughs> that's incredible. Come on. <laughs> my word. Uh, my word. Uh, what I was going to do... <laughs> What I was going to do was laughter. Really? <laughs> really? Really? Uh, no, I understand. I understand. I understand why that's there. Uh, I'm just editing myself. Um, I'm not on drugs, by the way, for any of you who... Uh, uh, no medication. I think we should split up into small groups and discuss whether that was a relevant joke within this particular environment. <laughs> We work hard, we deserve to laugh. Um, this... <clears throat> I was going to begin with a poem. Uh, that was my first... Uh, uh, yeah, that was... And I, and I will read it. I'm a poet by trade. Um, have you seen the churches... It's called Belong. Have you seen the churches of Lalibela swum in the warm springs of Addis Ababa? Have you heard the searching Nile of the Bible and the Koran my Abyssinia. Have you heard whispering widow peaks of sand? Seen the reeling rainbows as Victoria falls? Felt the mists on the Simeon mountains and the dust clouds of Harari's hyenas call? And did you see the gentleman taken, then imprisoned for 25 years, who walked out of chains and became president and who faced down the world's fears. Did you see his example to the world? How he embraced his adversary, spoke of unassailable truth and reconciliation, then we flounder in war's anniversaries. Hold me, while spirits of the past and rivers of blood run through me. All this past feeds this present and brings the truth into me. His story, your search, his journey, ours, something rings true, inside and strong. I stand atop Piccadilly Tower and sing, I belong here. I belong. I, the Mogadishan who knows troubled waters. I, the Belfast man who knows troubled cities. I, the Ethiopian who knows troubled lands. I, the Serbian, who crossed troubled seas, who walked through darkened valleys under the shadows of death and bled, and who lay amongst the freshly killed and in fear of tears play dead. Those who have, those who have cried cities, sobbed roads in the name of here, and where they came from, stand with children atop Bridgewater Hall and sing, I belong here. I belong. I'm the blackest, blackest man. The tongue twists, the skin dark. I moved next door to the whitest poet in John Cooper Clark. <laughs> I'm buried in the cemetery where Morrissey walked, in the earth from where grew stone roses. I am the seamstress from Manchester's dream coat, and I designed the clothes for Moses. I am the PSV, the sanctuary, the kitchen, the Reno, the red rhythm, the bull rings blues. I am the dread in its red, and for all that said, wherever I go, I am you. I grew up in the villages of Lancashire, you stood across my horizon since birth. The reason I came to Manchester is because it's the greatest place on earth. I bring my past, I bring my future, I bring my rights, and I bring my song. I stand atop the hacienda and shout, we belong here, we belong. <laughs> mm. 
My name's Lem Sisay and I'm trustee of the Foundling Museum, Chancellor of the University of Manchester, of which the Manchester Museum is a jewel in its crown. And if there's one message that I want to share with you today and that you can take throughout the conference in the next couple of days, uh, it's, did I really go for the next couple of days? I think I did. <laughs> is, is, is that creativity is not the monopoly of artists. We were born creative, every single one of us, and somebody at some point in our life told us you've got to choose between one or the other, and somehow many of us convinced ourselves that we don't do that. We're not the creative type, but we can make things happen. It's not... Did I really do that as well? I did. <laughs> but it's not... Was that urban? Was that urban of me? Was that urban? Does that classify as urban? Is that... <laughs> I know there's somebody watching this saying, I need structure. What is he? I've heard a poem. I've heard a joke. What is it? I need bullet points. <laughs> I need this to be squeezed into a manageable soundbite so I can tweet it. <laughs> Help me! Creativity is not the monopoly of artists. Laughter is a serious business. The con the connection between one human being and another, and another is a serious business. Just because you go out and dance at night and work in the daytime, it doesn't say, mean to say that dancing is the creative thing that you do and working is not. We deserve the right to think and to be creative. And it is nothing outside of who we already are. We bring our full stories to everything we do. And there is no... You know, one of the most emotional things that I was told in the children's homes when I was brought up uh, by a social worker was, I cannot be emotionally involved with my work, otherwise I'd have a nervous breakdown. That was the most emotional thing that I was ever told. The reason I'm saying that is because to think creatively is that you bring your entire story to your jobs and your work in and around and with museums. You are part of the equation, part of the community, part of the story, and your ideas matter. But first and foremost, um, like I said, I'm a poet uh, by trade. <clears throat> Uh, what I wanted to say to you is yesterday, well, yesterday, I have written a couple of things down here. Yesterday, I was on um, Celebrity Mastermind. <laughs> I've made it to the B list, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and, um, and I spoke to uh, a guy from Bargain Hunt. <laughs> and uh, he's asked me to say something here. And I promised that I, I would. His name's Philip Serrell. He's a very serious... Uh, he's from Bargain Hunt, but also he's done Antique Roadshow and the like. He, 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 um, he, he, t he gave me his biography, uh, but not until I'd given him mine. Um, <laughs> it's, it's what B-listers do. Uh, we, we write our own biogs. Um, and he's, he's trustee of the Museum of uh, Royal Worcester. And uh, he had Royal Worcester in the house. OK, all right, uh, we'll just uh, tweet that. Um, and he asked me to pass on this message, and his message was that, you know, museums should be active today because in 100 years' time, um, today is yesterday. Museums should be relevant to today because in 100 years' time, today will be yesterday. So what will people see then? He wanted me to pass that message on to you, and it's pretty damn good. I love your website. Regions love museums. Visitors love museums. Communities love... You'll see it on your website. Communities love museums. Collectives love museums. Tourists love museums. But it didn't say that museums love museums. <laughs> and I just wanted to uh, share that with you. Uh, that went down like a lead brick. <laughs> Creative thinking is, 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 is when I uh, met with Caro uh, Howell um, from the Foundling Museum, the director of the Foundling Museum, <clears throat> she said, Lem, you can do anything in here. You could, you know, do as an artist, you know, you can, you, you, what would you like to do? And we were sat in the cafe and... Um, and I, t I, I shared with Caro my thoughts on foster care and how foster children, the outsiders in society, suffering the prejudice that, uh, that they do. If you're naughty, I'll put you in a children's home. A lot of people have said that to the children, or even thought that to, to the children, but, in fact, um, naughty children go, don't go into children's homes. So... Uh, and, and 
sorry, the, the point that I was, I, I was saying is that um, I, I shared with her my theory that um, <clears throat> Harry Potter was a foster child, Superman was uh, adopted, <clears throat> um, Romulus and Remus uh, were without parents, uh, and from the Greek myths to classical and popular culture, the fostered Harry Potter was a foster child, the fostered adopted, and Elizabeth Salander, the girl with the dragon tattoo, was fostered, adopted and orphaned. Um, that, that throughout popular culture um, and classic culture, there have been fostered, adopted and orphaned children, Heathcliff, Jane Eyre, David Copperfield, uh, uh, Oliver Twist, uh, Elf at Christmas, uh, Elf will be... Uh, I, I, and the fact that they're, 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 they're front and centre in popular culture, and yet people don't make a connection. I don't make a connection that Harry Potter was a foster child and there's a foster child in the street. And my, intention, my contention is that, 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 that that's because of a societal prejudice which goes back until uh, the poor houses, it goes back to women being pregnant, pregnant without a husband, it goes back to patriarchy. Uh, and its dominance uh, in popular culture and how it has um, uh, demonised uh, the pregnant woman without a husband and the child without, uh, without parents, uh, thought of them as, as either evil or ungodly, uh, etc. And Oliver Twist is actually a really good example uh, of a child being punished for being without parents and being told to work. And if you look back at the history of children's homes, you'll see that uh, uh, that's often what happened to children. I said to, um, I said to uh, Caro, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love this cafe to have all of the walls, to have the names of all of those incredible people, uh, um, uh, Anne of Green Gables, uh, the lot, uh, on, on the walls of the cafe, uh, top to bottom, utterly changing uh, the nature uh, of the commercial space that was the, that was the cafe. And she said, yeah, OK, let's do it. And, uh, and we did it. And once we had done it, we, um, we raised the sales of the food in the cafe. They were chuffed to bits. <laughs> That's a northern saying. <laughs> it's, not, it's not urban. <laughs> and they were chuffed to bits. Right, uh, have I done my time? <laughs> I've done my time. I've so done my time. I've so done my time. Thank you. No problem. I thought. Thanks. Uh, they, were <laughs> they were chuffed to bits. The point is, is uh, they did it. Uh, they they put it up. Uh, it raised sales. Not only that, a lot of the people who came to the family museum and sat in that cafe, having some respite from seeing some of the incredibly emotional artwork that it is in there. Some of the people themselves fostered, adopted, or or orphaned or with parents who once were in foundling hospitals themselves. Uh, there would be these beautiful conversations that happened in that cafe. They would slowly, slowly begin to realise that the, photo the, the, the words on the wall um, held them uh, in mind. And um, it was, what was beautiful about it is that that, that commercial space uh, was transformed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lem Sisse. I could have spoken to you for three days. I, <laughs> I, I should be more organised, but I'm happy not to be. Um, I wanted to say something about the word curator. Does it bug you that everybody's a curator now? <laughs> that, that when you go, I'm a curator, they say, yeah, I'm a curator. I, I curated me dinner. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It must really bug you. And, and, uh, but that is a result of your success. <laughs> Know that. Um, art, uh, creativity is not the monopoly of artists. It's yours. Go well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>